So my name is Maria Gardner. We're located here at Seaside Art Studio and my business is called Pour Your Art Out SPI. Um, today we're going to be doing a basic pour um, and it will be a flip cup pour that we will do. This here is a five flip cup pour. Um, you can tell it's five because there is a little line that goes through it, the white line, which was my base coat. They don't like to play, so they'll never blend. So here is one, two, three, four, and five going in here. The paints that we use are acrylic paints, and then we use a pouring medium um, to, uh, to uh, reduce the viscosity of your paint. Uh, some people like to use water and glue, a PVA glue. Some people like to use an actual pouring medium, uh, Liquitex Basic, GAC, something like that. Uh, other people like to use Floetrol, water. So really the best way to find out what's going to work for you is to play around with it. Um, I like to use uh, Floetrol, um, some Liquitex, things like that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you, a, a, a do a demo on what you're going to hopefully achieve today. All right. This is my canvas. I'm just using a basic tile. <clears throat> I like to add um, a base coat and this is a little thinner than the mixtures that I've mixed here. This is um, so that the paint doesn't stick to the surface. When you're using a canvas, you have a tooth on here, it's called a tooth. And so when you're pouring a paint, it will tend to roll over and you'll lose your cells. You're like, oh no, no, no. So um, if you use a barrier, you'll end up with it gliding over. So I just pour, and that's how you can see it's very thin. I just like to pour a little bit first onto there You'll see a little bubble. This is butane torch, <coughs> creme brulee, kitchen, nice and cheap on Amazon by the way. And mm -hmm. so you'll see that I've got a little bubble there. And you can either pop it with your finger or you can just give it a little torch just to make sure you're getting rid of the bubbles. Um, the last thing you want is as your paint painting is setting for a bubble to dry mid bubble <laughs> or to actually pop and then cause a, create, uh, a crater in your artwork. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to layer my paints into my little cup. We don't use brushes here. No brushes allowed. This is the brush free zone. So I'm going to use today phalo blue. I'm going to use titanium white. I'm going to use a little bit of metallic teal here. <clears throat> the, the secret is to, to put your colors in the order that you want them. Um, you don't want to put them too close. If you're using more than three, co uh, three colors, you don't want two dark colors close together because then they just get hidden. Mm. So I've got three colors today, but I'm going to sandwich my white between my teal and my phalo blue. So let's get started. So I'm just putting in a small amount in the bottom there. There's my white on top. Now this is a layered flip cup, cup. If I wanted to do a dirty pour, then I would pour from high which, and squirt it hard, which would then penetrate your layer beneath. Then I'm going to add, and then I'm going back to my white, just so that I haven't got too much of blue and the teal together. So that is my first layer. Okay, so this is the second layer coming up. third layer. It's always good to have a uh, two or three layers. Now we're going to do the actual flip cup and this is where the fun happens. I'm going to take this, place it on top, turn it upside down and leave it like that. This is why you do create a small puddle and not completely fill it up because then you'll <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> So 
So now I'm just going to finish pouring my base. Use your hands and just cover your whole area. And now I'm going to just do a quick torch again, get rid of those bubbles. And I'm going to now remove the cup. And as you can see, when I removed the cup, I pulled it this way. I don't leave it dripping because then you're going to create a different effect altogether. Leave that for a little bit just to do its thing. And it gives you time then to think, ooh, I like that. And yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the torch again and I'm going to bubble this area. Can you see the cells popping up underneath? There we go, we're getting lots of little bubbles. And that's the silicone reaction, the viscosity of the paint as well, that's trapped underneath each layer. It wants to come to the top. Now the fun part is to, well, it's all fun really. I keep saying the fun part, but it's all fun. So now what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the paint and figure out where we want to cover the paint. Do I want to just do a strip going this way and have some negative space or do I want to cover the whole thing? And I think right now I'm heading in the direction of giving this a negative space. But when you do yours, it's totally up to you. Depends what you're feeling at the time. So right now I'm going to pick up the paint and I'm going to manipulate it and bring it down this way. Now let me tip it towards you so that you can see. And you just want to do this very slowly so that you keep your cells can you see how they're stretching? And I'm taking it this way slightly and that way. Okay, now I'm going to tip it in the other direction because I don't want that white space at the end there. I really want it to cover it all. There we go. Okay, so now I've got all my paint at that end and I really want to center it and bring some more of that phalo blue into the picture. I think I'm going to take a little this way as well, not have so much of a, a defining space. And then I'm going to take it back this way as well. See how the, the base will help just to move the paint. It doesn't roll over it at all. It just shifts it nicely. Okay, and now I'm happy with that. So I'm going to put that down now. <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure that I've got coverage on the sides, which is something you'll have to do on your masterpieces, on your big pieces. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little torch, just in case there are any little bubbles, if you can see them at all, they're just popping nicely. And that will bring up any color that's trapped underneath. So I've got this negative space now, and I think I'm going to just give it a little blow, just to soften it up. It looks a little hard here. So now I'm going to blow out the edges of my piece, and I'm using this very expensive tool here called a straw. As you can see that's creating more cells and it's just taking the hard defined line and making it very soft. Let's do the other side. <clears throat> 